Today is June the 1st, 2021, the first day of the new year, uh, month of June. Um, as usual, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity of prayer. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. God, we thank you, God, for our families. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, God, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, God, just for your presence. So, God, I ask you, God, that you bless this forecast. Let it be healing for your people. And let your people enjoy themselves, get away from whatever they're going through just for a little while. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's good, everybody. How was everyone's Memorial Day weekend? Um, I'm waiting for everybody to come in. Let me go ahead and get a birthday shout outs. Um, yeah, quite a few this last week. You know, I've born day to Talisa Lucas, uh, Felisa Powell, my man Stephen and Cynthia Cobb. A couple of both celebrated birthday. My man Dwayne out in Little Rock, Pat, uh, my man Cleo, Bishop Peter Hollerback. Happy Burl Born Day. Um, Tania, Sheila Simmons. Uh, shout out to Bobby, Mr. Bobby Die. Happy Born Day. Gave me one of my first jobs <laughs> with his catering company. Uh, happy Born Day, Bobby. Um, uh, who else we got? All the anniversary. Shout out to Tashima and her husband. Congratulations on 26 years of marital bliss. Um, pray that God keep you guys and you guys continue to grow together. So I'm happy for you guys. Um, how was everyone's Memorial Day? You know, I want to say rest in peace to my Uncle Charles, my Uncle Roscoe, and my grandfather. Roscoe been a senior as well. He wasn't, um, he didn't die in the war, but he was a World War II vet. Um, we miss you, Granddad. And thank you for your service. Thank you, God. For all that lost their lives, shout out to the families, my condolences to family as we celebrate Memorial Day, as we just finished celebrating Memorial Day weekend. For all those that have family members that lost their lives during, you know, combat. Um, what's good, Janelle? What's good, Toshiba? What's going on, wrong? So let's get these comments going and what we're going to be talking about tonight. While I'm, while I'm waiting on you guys to start chiming in to see what we're going to be talking about, I wanted to ask, did anybody see the story about uh, Chase Browse down in Jacksonville, Florida? Did anybody see the story about that seven-year-old boy in uh, Florida? You know, I want to, I want to shout out to... Uh, Sure, I'm pretty sure he's not watching, but shout out and kudos to Chase Prouse, young man, seven years old. So the story on the news was him and his um him his father and his four year old sister. What's good, not in month? What's good, Ralph? So father has a seven year old son and four year old daughter. They out daughter they out fishing. The boat is anchored. The father was fishing, the little girl and the brother was swimming in the water, and the, the, the current was very strong, so some kind of way, the little girl was required by law to have on a life vest, so she had on a life vest, but Chase tries to save his sister, so the father gets in the water and tries to, you know, hold both children, you know, with a strong current. And Chase didn't have on a life jacket neither of the father. And the father said that the daughter got away from him. And Chase, the seven-year-old, the seven-year-old boy, began to swim to shore. He said this young man, seven years old, he had to swim for an hour to shore. But once he got to shore, he was able to reach um, a neighbor, 
whoever he flagged somebody down to get help. He called the fire department and the wildlife commission. They were able to send the rescue boat out there for the father and the daughter. But it's, it's amazing when you, if you guys haven't seen that story yet, get a, get a chance, look it up. Not, the young man's name is Chase Prouse, P-R-O-U-S-T, down in Jacksonville, Florida. Amazing, amazing. Um, I thank God for being with him. And you know, they asked him, how was he able to swim that long? He said, I have no idea. But Chase, I'm here to tell you, I have an idea. Not only do I have an idea, I know God was definitely with you, brother. Um, so shout out to Chase. And it, and it gave me an idea that I want to do. So for all you guys that have children that have, uh, doesn't even have to be her heroic or anything like that. They were just great achievements. I know nephew just graduated. Wrong. And shout out to um my cousin Joy who graduated from college early. Shout out to Joy. Um, so what when I went when I read this story and I was listening to it as I was driving back home today to get ready for the show. Um, I wanted I came up where well, I had the idea. Well, maybe I want to reach out to you guys to see if you have any children or young people in your life that ne not necessarily uh, have a heroic story, so to say. But just we just want to big up the accomplishments, man. It's up to us to support our youth. Like that's that's been real something that's real really been strong in my heart lately is supporting our youth. You know, so many times you know as parents, sometimes we can be disciplinarians and we always you know on them, on them, on them. But sometimes we gotta praise them as well. Having said that, I want to give another shout out to um. My, um, my, keep my, what's up, man? I'm gonna be here. You soon in right on time. I want to give a shout out to my dynamic cousin, Kia Tucker, who just received her second degree on this weekend. Well, last weekend, but we celebrated this weekend here. I had a great time with my family. Um, shout out to Kia doing major things. Um, she's going to be back on. She just came out last. If you guys remember, she was on a couple of months ago when she talked about. She was getting ready to come out with a book. The book is out now and it's available. So I'm going to get the information together for you guys to be able to purchase a book if you want to just to support her and all that she's doing. But she's a fantastic teacher. You know, kid, keep on doing everything that you're doing and know that we all proud of you and we love you very much. You know, we're just a blast to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, man, you know, you guys that have, have kids that have accomplishments, you know, get with me. Either DM me or reach out to me so we can do a whole show where we just bigging up our children and our youth, you know, on, on their great accomplishments. You know what I mean? Let them, let them feel the love because one of the things that I've, I've learned growing up in Newark and, you know, everybody's story is different and, you know, depending on what you, what you've been through and where you come from. But if you don't get that, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? You don't get that validation, so to speak, from your family and things. You sure gonna get it from the streets or somewhere that you shouldn't be getting it. So let's pick up the ball and, and make more of a conscious effort to really support our youth and, and everything that they're doing, you know, whether we agree with it or not. But let's let's show them that we have their support, that they have our support. You don't always have to like something just to support it, or you don't have to like the concept or no idea to support it, but you can still support. You know what I mean? Unless it goes against your values or whatever the case may be. You know, if my son wanted to sing punk rock, okay, yeah, I'm still by the album. I don't necessarily listen to punk rock myself, but I can still support the cause and his dream and his endeavors. So, you know, you guys get that information to me. What's good, Jackie? Um, we love you. I'm glad you were here with us. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me as usual, you know. Um, always fun with the Tuckers. Always an eventful weekend with the Tuckers. Always. Uh, anybody, ain't nobody had no questions that they wanted to ask for the other, um, ask each other while we're doing this here or for me or things that they wanted to talk about. Uh, we must affirm our children. They will resonate in their spirit. Absolutely, Dad. Absolutely. It's our responsibility to big up each other. You know what I mean? Cause like I said, if they don't get that validation from home, they're going to get it from somewhere. And I'd rather it be from a good source of than you know something that they don't really need to. Um, excellent idea, Jackie. Thank you. Um, 
until y'all have some questions for me. That I, something I want to been talking, I wanted to talk about in general is. So I, I didn't want to really do it in this form, and I don't want to get into it. We're, we're not about to debate or argue stuff like that. There, I'm just I'm curious on people take uh, to vaccine or not to vaccine. How do you guys feel about the vaccination? Are you guys pro pro vaccine, non vaccine? We need to talk about our children with autism that have some amazing mind, talent, and abilities that have been counted out by medical professionals. Absolutely, Rochelle. Thanks for that. Thanks for that comment. Um, and I actually know some people that could be a part of that particular show. That that's you know that's I want to do a show on that on that period, Rochelle, um, on autism. Because like you say, they, they have some amazing minds and everything isn't, you know, I, everything isn't so, um, oh, <laughs> talk about how I'm on me, but uh, autism, autism, um, again, it's about bigging up our children. And I think people, we have to release the stigma that goes along with that. And things of that nature. There, um, Jennifer says she doesn't. She doesn't. She don't trust it. Um, Bev says I hate vaccine shaming. It's a choice. But I know I will have one do. I know I will have to have one do my job. Oh man, praying for you, Jen. I took the vaccine because I knew sooner or later it would become mandatory because I work in the medical field. But I'm not confident in, in having my child vaccinated. Hmm. Very interesting, Rocha. Thanks for your answer and your honesty. Yes, me too. My son. My son has Osberger and his mind is out of this world. His talents are amazing. All right, so Rocha, you definitely you definitely get with me. And you know what I mean? We can top that show off with your son and other parents. You know, I kind of want to get into that there though. Um I wouldn't mind doing a show on autism in general. You know the difficulties or the challenges you face as a parent of an autistic child, uh, if you find it challenging at all, because I, I I don't think that it's just a special set of rules for children. That parenting is a is a struggle, in my opinion. <laughs> Regardless, you know, it's, it never ends. It's just whether they have autism, whether they have you know sickness, whether they're you know whether they're just just children in general. There's a challenge sometimes raising children, so you know, I kind of want to talk about that. I think that would be a real interesting show. And I think it's important for us to get that information out there, you know what I mean? Because, you know, like like they used to say when we were younger, you know, it takes a village, you know, and we got to get back to that concept of, you know, that village mentality. You know, I can remember the days when Ms. Johnson, <laughs> you, you know, you might get three beaten because Ms. Johnson beat you then. You know, nowadays we in a gen we in a generation where you better not touch my kid or all this other kind of stuff, man. And it's not about just being kids, but you got a different level of respect. And then we wonder why the world is, you know, going down in the way that it is. Jackie says I'm personally researching side effects, preserving and waiting, but lately leaning toward vaccination. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I'm with you. Um, I don't like vaccine shame either. It's definitely a choice. You know, what you say, Bev? I have always thought you must meet a child where they are, even with autism, find out how they learn. Exactly. And that's what it's really about. You know what I mean? Because if your child was blind or deaf, would you want to throw them away because you don't know how to communicate with them on a normal level. Now nah, you find a way. You have to find a way. So that that's yeah, that's definitely something. Uh, why are you texting me questions instead of putting them on the show? But anyway, how do I feel about the vaccine? <laughs> um 
again, I feel like it's a choice. Uh, and my choice is that that stuff ain't going in my body under no circumstances. None. I'm with you, Jen. I don't trust it. I don't trust anything at all about what the government tells us. Um, I don't I don't trust it. So therefore for me, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. Period. I don't take a flu shot. I don't take I'm not taking I'm not taking the vac- vaccination. Period. There's nothing even for me to think about. I don't have to do no research. <laughs> and that's my choice, you know. But I don't care what information they find out. For me, I'm not doing it. I don't trust everyone that is claiming to be vaccinated. I think that's a good point too, uh, Beth. You know, because like you said, uh, at the graduation, what, what, did, what did you say when you went to the graduation? They had the sign that saying everybody was fully va- must be fully vaccinated in it, and people were in there. But I guarantee you, everybody in there wasn't fully vaccinated. So you know. It's, 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 I, I look at it as another form of manipulation, them having a hidden agenda. Uh, I don't know what that hidden agenda is, but I don't trust it. So therefore, I won't be your guinea pig. I won't be any part of that whatsoever. Um, uh, Dan said, uh, <laughs> talk about Monique. Um, how you, it's, it's plenty of ladies in here. How you ladies feel about what she said? You know, I'll give, I'll give my take after you guys comment on it um, from a male's perspective. But how do you ladies feel about that? You know, the whole Monique situation. So if you guys haven't seen over the weekend, I'm not sure what it was, but recently Monique um, had a video or excerpt from somewhere talking about how um, – you know, with the bonnet, the whole bonnet movement, women out with the bonnet and on their hair and stuff like that there, and how it feeds into a stereotype, what happened to the self-love and just going out any kind of way. And, you know, what's you, what's you ladies' thoughts on that? Pretty much, you don't need to be going out any old kind of way. Because I was listening to Heather B. and Tracy on Sway in the Morning this morning talk about it. And they were talking about how, you know, like back in our grandmother's days, you know, people people dressed. <laughs> they dressed. I always I used to trip out even when I would look at old Negro League games and things of that nature there. You have people at these college football games and baseball games in the Negro League. I mean, with they Sunday's vessel. Now, granted, most of the time they did play on Sundays and they were coming from church, but even on night games and stuff, you know, those people were sharp. Uh, Rochelle said she was absolutely correct. I'm tired of seeing these women going out to Walmart and they're buying this in their pajamas. <laughs> I work for OBGYN and these women come in with bonnet, stars, pajamas, and they just look terrible. <laughs> and it makes me wonder who got you pregnant. <laughs> Shout out to Jen. The problem is she voiced her opinion in a role and brawl it. All right. All right. So I'm glad you brought that up, man. And this is this is my take on it from listening to it. I get both sides of the argument. I, just like we were just talking about with the vaccine. It's a choice. Now, I can't condemn nobody for coming out with a bonnet on their head, but do I want to see it? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? I don't want to see that. Um uh, and and uh, and I, at first, because I'm not a big fan of Monique. Period. <laughs> Let me say that first. I'm not a big fan of Monique, but I I agree with some of what she said, and I disagree with some of what she said. But I was looking, you know, I was kind of looking for stuff because I don't necessarily care for. I was looking for stuff that kind of poke holes in what she was saying, and I thought about that too, man. The problem is she voiced her opinion in a role and brawling. But the difference is that what she was saying, how it pertains to her versus what she was saying is she was saying, you know, being out in public in that way. She she did that recording in her home or whatever. The privacy of her home or whatever, you know, she wasn't actually out in public. But still, you could look at that as a form of kind of the same thing, being that you know that this going out to the world. So you're condemning them for looking a certain way, being presentable in public 
and you're about to make something, your opinion, public, but you you choose to do it from your role. So I, I kind of agree with you on that, Bev. Like, it's, it's kind of hypocritical, but at the same time, but I, I see what she's saying. Like, in other words, she would never go out in public like that, but she has no problem posting it. <laughs> and just like I said, from, from a male's perspective, it's uh it's not it's not desirable. But I, I must admit there have been days where hey I throw some shorts on, a jersey on, with some house shoes just because I'm running in the store. I, I me, I don't really care about what other people think or I'm not trying to I'm not auditioning every time I go out in public. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason I say not, not, I'm not making excuses for them. But everybody doesn't have the same value system or put the same value system in appearance, their personal appearance. You know, some of them just don't have that mindset. And, and it's funny, one of the guys on the show this morning, or Sway in the morning, he brought up a good point, too. He said it's, he finds it interesting that most of these girls that come out with the, uh, the caterpillar eyelashes and the bonnets on their head with the little fur, fur baby house shoes, thinking that they actually shoes. <laughs> he said, it's funny. If you look at all of them, they still got their nails done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you pick and choose what you want to look presentable or what you consider as presentable. And I think a lot of that, well, I won't blame it on parenting. I don't even go to the mailbox in my mind. I feel you, sir. I ain't mad. And congratulations, too, on your home. Congratulations, Michelle. I was praising God with you. That's a blessing. Um, I won't wear bonnet, pajama, slippers in public. However, I will. I wear slides to the airport so I can judge. So I can't judge. Got you. Um, like I said, is it a good look? No, absolutely not. But it's still it's still your choice. Whether I agree with it or not, it's your prerogative. But. I don't, I don't get into that whole you making us look bad as a people and all that then because you don't represent me. <laughs> and, and from, uh, from most of you guys comments, they don't represent you guys either. <laughs> uh, but it is good to see that you still have women out here that have integrity and saying, look, okay, even if I just got to go run and grab a gallon of milk. Let me put something more on South presentable because you just never know. You know, it's like our parents used to tell us, you know, every time you leave out the house, you gotta make you never know what's gonna happen. So make sure your drawers is clean. <laughs> make sure you got us some clean drawers because you just never know. Thank you, glory be to God. I missed that um that other comment from you too, Beth. What was you saying that kid was a special special education teacher? If so, yeah, I'm gonna need you guys. To, I'm gonna need you to connect with her, um, Rochelle, my cousin Kia. That's a teacher. Uh, you know, she might have some inside school for you or some some pointers that to help you with, you know, in educating your son and everything else. You know how to communicate. I know that's right. Yeah, my, my my mom was big on that. I know my cousin Wilson was big on it too. Hey, don't don't you leave it now, <laughs> funky. <laughs> Make sure the one wears is clean. I know. Yeah, and I, I what I do is after the show's over, I I connect you, or I send you her profile picture, so you can link up with her, become friends with her. But kid Tucker, but uh, let's see. But leaning towards it because of concerns for family. Some of you may know two of whom were near near death because of COVID. And pre existing conditions, one essential and worker, and I have to fly out of state to early. 
this shit and take care of them. It was very scary, but thank God and for the prayers and their recovery. Their recovery. Absolutely, Jackie. Yeah, I'm gonna be praying with you for your loved ones as well. Um, again, like as far as the vaccination, it's strictly a choice, and it's what you choose to believe. If you believe that this is is a uh, that you're in danger of other safety and your loved ones and so whatever, I I can't judge you for that. I can't judge you for that. That's your that's your right. Um. You know, I was having a conversation with my cousin this weekend. Me, I said, I'm not even thinking about the vaccination. I'm not getting in those no circumstances. But at the same time, I refuse to let COVID, you know, I see people that haven't seen their pa- they parents in almost going on two years now. What's good, la? La, la. Um, you know, there's been people going on almost two years that haven't seen their parents because I don't want to get them sick and all, you know, the fear of the unknown, so to speak. And I refuse to be one of the people, you know. I never know when, um, you know, when my mom is going to be gone from there, my dad's going to be gone from there. So if I can give them a hug, if they don't have no problem, it's not just my parents. I'm still the same way that I was pre-COVID that I asked, that I am after COVID. Um, I'm a hugger. So if you have no problem with, with hugs, I'm still giving people hugs. I ain't never stop. I don't do. I do the air down because if that's your preference, then I respect that. But I never. Life is too short. Life is too short, and I'll be. I'll be doggone if I let you know them dictate on how I spend time with my loved ones and things of that nature. Shit. I'm so glad that she did. You know she got she's vaccinated, but you know I'm glad you you went ahead and did that. You know you were thinking about the safety of your parents. Well, here it is. You didn't know within a matter of months that your mom would be gone. So, you know, kudos for you for actually stepping up. I think it was Thanksgiving, I want to say, that you were kind of nervous about going that way. Nah, I knew you went for Christmas. But, you know, to each his own. But, you know, I think it's real important. If anything, like I told Daddy last week on the show, you know, if anything COVID has taught me, it's taught me to love harder. Let the people know that I love them. Let them know that I love them. Why I love them. You know, what they mean to me. Because once I'm laying in that box or once I'm cremated, you can say whatever you want to or you, you can think whatever you want to, but it, it's different when you know. And, you know, you let people know. So we've lost a lot of people in these last two years, man. COVID and un-COVID related. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know. I'm a conspiracy theorist as well. I'm not. I'm not extreme with it. But the question that I always ask is, I don't want this whole thing to get about be about COVID. But for me personally, you know, we see these stats and we see these these um, reports. They talk about the death tolls and like my thing is, just because you say that somebody died of COVID, how do I know that that's a hundred percent true? Versus if you say that they didn't die of COVID, how do I know that they didn't? You know, we don't know. We don't, we, 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 we as regular people have no idea. So I, I'm just not one of those people that's just going to believe what you tell me just because you, you, you know, it's saying, you saying it. Just because it's coming from the CDC or the president or whoever, even the health department. Because I, I even though I feel like to a certain degree, they all have a hidden agenda. You know what I mean? They're going to push their common cause. I've said for years, and I've known this because in high school, all my cops, all my football coaches were cops. And we would and we would see different things in North. We would see things, and some things would make the news. And by the time it made the news, if you were standing there when it happened, you like, that ain't how that went. You know what I mean? But that makes a good story. So I learned early in the city, you know, the news is not necessarily the news, or the news is not necessarily true. And what the news is is what they want you to know. I feel the real news is what they're not telling you. You know what I mean? That's that's where the real story is at and what they're not saying. So I'm not quick to believe something just because people tell me. And I thank God for my bishop, you know, late Bishop Everett, and my mom for, for you know, teaching me that or raising me that way. Because even when he would preach on Sunday, you know, he'll tell you, look, 
I need to see y'all taking notes, you know, and writing these scriptures down because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to go home and read it again and let the word minister to you. You know what I'm saying? Don't go based off of just what I'm telling you. So I, I've never been quick to just take information and run, run from it. Um, Rochelle said there were many reports of people dying of COVID that were actually dying of other health issues. It was sad. It was said that the doctors were getting paid to say that someone died of COVID and they did in a motorcycle accident or had a heart attack. Absolutely. I 100% believe that. And that's, that's my whole point. We don't know. But just because they tell us something, just like, you know, you're seeing uh, all these celebrities now and, and, uh, you know, take, take the vaccine. I'm vaccinated. How do I know that, that they ain't pay you, they, you know, they ain't pay you or give you a stipend to promote the vaccine that your team vaccine, they break you off with $50,000 or whatever else to do a commercial just to say you're doing a vaccine, but they shoot you up with water. Cause you one of those people like me, like you ain't putting that in my body. So for the sake of argument, yeah, we can act like it's the vaccine, but it ain't truly the vaccine. You know, I, I don't, I don't believe him. I don't believe him. A narrative can be made to support whatever view you wish to present. Absolutely, Ben. Absolutely. Same thing with statistics. Same thing with stats. I, I knew somebody that went to college and majored in that. And, and one of the things that he always told me that was interesting, because I have always been a numbers guy. I like to see numbers. I like to see numbers because, you know, they say numbers don't lie. But numbers do lie, but, you know, it's, it's a good saying, but numbers do lie sometimes. But one of the things that he told me about stats is, Anybody that's, that's, that's a statistician, that's in the stats, a statistician, that, that are in the stats, um, stats can, you can make stats say whatever it is that you wanted to say. So, you know, it kind of burst my bubble a little bit, being that I was a big stat guy. Well, the numbers say this here, and I thought about that. It seemed like the more and more we get removed from, not hating on them, but it seemed like the more and more we get removed from Michael Jordan, playing days, the better and better his all-time numbers look to me. He gets a better percentage. He gets a, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's scoring more points a game. It just seems like as more and more time goes by, those numbers, they're not the same numbers that was around in 2000. So how do we explain that? But I am not to the point of getting the vaccine yet unless I have to for work. But even then, I still don't know. Yeah, I'm praying for you in that situation, Jackie. Yeah, because that, that's just me. When I say it under no circumstances, that's exactly what I mean. That includes work. That includes travel. There's a whole bunch of places that I want, that I plan on going and shit that I know that I can't go because it's just a matter of time before, well, I feel, I'm not going to say I know, but I, I feel it's just a matter of time before it's mandatory to get on these planes and, and things of that nature there. So, here on out, I'm strictly driving. I'm in my car everywhere I'm going. <laughs> uh, my job say, you need a vaccination? Okay, I need to find a new appointment because I do not trust it. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the vaccine. I don't trust none of it. Wait, wait, period. But that's just me. Um, um, who's that? Yeah, so uh, what is the percent of the people watching this live? The number says nine. However, there are three more people in this room with me. Unaccounted number live. There you go. There you go. You know, because there are people, there are people that want to so it's like, to answer your question, though, babe, I'm not sure because it, it shows me very different numbers. Like what I'm seeing is 21, but at right now anyway, but it it also varies. I don't know who's in, it never shows me who's in here as opposed to like, you know, the, the lives that you join on Instagram live or Instagram rather. You know, you see the names. So I only know who's in here by the comments, but I do thank you guys for viewing. And I'm super, super excited. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Rochelle, Bev, Jackie, all you, all you guys that view regularly, people, I want to see if you guys have time to do a Zoom call. 
uh, maybe either Thursday or Friday, which how it works better for, best for you guys. Because uh, next week, next week we made it, y'all. Next week we will be celebrating one year of the Marvin Bennett Julia show. Next next uh, Tuesday, June 8th, will be our one year anniversary. So I kind of want to get to you guys. Uh, I've been toying with different ideas of how to do, go about doing that show. I haven't learned what the idea that I really wanted to do was I wanted to be able to um, piece together different clips from throughout the year and, you know, do a show. But I'm starting to see, I'm starting to realize the more and more I get involved in the show is uh, something has to give, you know. I want to keep it authentic. I want to keep it live. I want to keep it, you know, unscripted. But for me to do a lot of editing and the things that I want to do or a lot of the ideas that I have and concepts that I have for the show, I would have to pre-record the show. And that way I could edit them and chop them off the way that I want to do it. And I wanted to be able to play different clips. Uh, you know, some of my favorite moments throughout the last year, you know, different guests. Uh, but I can't do that. There's no, there, there's no tools for me to be able to chop a piece together doing a live show. So, you know, what you got? What you guys' idea on that? Then, because I, I do want to continue to do them live. I don't want to pre-record them and then show them to you like they are live. You know, like churches are doing now. You know, they're not there on Sunday morning doing the praise and worship and all that there. Well, they were. You know, some people are going back in. Um, look, Ben said, go ahead and level up. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think it's, I think it'll be um I think we got a good foundation. I think we have a good um core. I think we got a good concept as far as the show in itself. But there's so much more I could do if I would pre record the shows. Um as far as chopping them up, adding music and you know, just looking more a better look, better look so to speak. Um so I kind of wanted to know, I wanted to see if we could set up a Zoom call with you guys, you know, specifically Beverly, um, Jen, um, Toshiba, Rochelle now as well, you know, because you guys have been undoubtedly my top viewers, you know what I mean? So I really, really thank you guys for your support. I thank you guys for the encouragement. I thank you guys for taking this ride with me, you know what I mean? Um. so I kind of want to I want to see what kind of direction you guys thought would be good for next week the anniversary show. I had a I had a one thought process of having you guys come on, particularly you three, um, as well as uh, you know Toshiba, who's one of our more recent top viewers. Don't go Spike Lee with people fading in and out. <laughs> That's what we got to do, baby. Hey, if we're gonna do it, like you said, level up. We got to go all the way. <laughs> Get my Spike Lee and John Singleton on. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of go about, uh, sorry, excuse me, doing, set, doing next week's show, doing, having, like, you guys pop in and, you know, give shout-outs or, you know, to the show or talk about things that you like about the show, things that you don't like about the show, things that you think that would make it better. I thought about uh, having Kevin and Lamar, my god brothers, as well as possibly Bev or, you know, maybe four of you guys interviewing me for, for mm -hmm. just to change things up on the year. Ask me to, you know, the do's and don'ts, just do specials throughout. That's a good, I like that, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I feel like what you're saying through that is you can keep the same format, but still do special shows throughout too. I, I like that. I like that. That way I will have to go completely um, pre-recorded. We can still do this here, but we can still, yeah, I like that, Jackie. Thank you. I like that idea a lot. And that's something that I'm definitely going to look into, you know, because I, I do want to have, I do want to have a show. I'm, I'm still, you know, recent years, I still haven't had the musical guests like I wanted to because, you know, it's, it's so many different pieces and putting this together. It's not a, it's not a matter of just, uh, turning the camera on and just coming to you guys, you know, especially for the type of things that I want to do. I want to be able to have musical guests. Just like, a, you know, like I told you guys, this, 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 the concept for this show came from like Arsenio Hall meets Bill Maher. 
So, you know, Arsenio had musical guests every week. And there were times where they would play the music and sometimes they would come sit on the couch. So I would like to be able to do that where, you know, if, if, if I have musical guests, they're not just live as far as the music, but then they can't partake in a conversation as well. So, like I said, Jackie, thank you for that idea. And I def- I'm going to work on that. I'll get with Ed and some of my technical people to figure out how we can do that as far as, you know, like I said, adding musical guests to the show and incorporating more people. And, you know, just like I said, like Bam said earlier, you know, leveling up. Let's take it to the next level in this second in this second year. But uh, you know, I really want to take this time out though for real. I really I really, you guys don't know what you guys mean to me and, and how important this is. Because like I said, this is this is not something that, that I wanted to do for me, but this is something that the Lord laid on my part to do for you the people. You know what I mean? Because so many times, especially in this last year and a half, you know, since the George Floyd, the Bob Arby, Beyond Teller, everybody, everybody, you know, all this, this, not just police brutality, COVID, we've been going through a lot. We've been going through a lot. And a lot of people don't, uh, a lot of people just are angst. They have a lot of stuff that's pent up. And they feel like they don't have a voice. So I wanted to do this for us regular people to be able to come out and get, you know, vent a little bit. Vent amongst one another. And you guys develop relationships amongst each other. You know what I mean? I am in. I want this to become a, a community. And I'm glad to see that because it's already started, like, with Jen and Bev. You know, they they go back and forth in the comments amongst themselves. You know, Rochelle, Sheba. Jackie, um, don't have to read this live. But yes, brother, that was meant. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> and then you can add the recorded copy in this question. All right, so I'm sorry, Jackie. I was reading it as I was going out, so I was having to read it live. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to do both of them. And, and and that's what I'm saying, Jack. I really, I really love you, and I thank you for being a part of this as well. You know what I mean? Because... This is what makes the show. You guys, this is what makes the show. It's not about me um, at all. It's about you guys. And I just really wanted people to have a voice. I wanted to give a voice to the voiceless. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to give a platform to the people that think that they're, uh, that think that their opinion doesn't matter. It does. All things matter here. And you just, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad, cause some people are not gonna agree with your opinion. The feelings might get hurt, but you still got the platform to do that. I know everybody don't, everybody don't always agree with me. Me and a lot. We, we didn't have a lot. He's my friend, my best friend Rodney. When he was on the show, he was like, it's funny how we best friends, but half the time we don't see things the same way. But it doesn't change the love. It doesn't change the love whatsoever. I love this because if I, I, I definitely remember you, Jen. I think me and you, Jennifer, we don't probably have more conversations throughout this last year on the show than we had all four years ago on the West Side together. <laughs> I just remember some Jim being so shocked and to herself. And you be on here, girl. You just be in these comments, doing your thing. Now I just need you to get in them, them, uh, them online, them, them site streets <laughs> and find you a boo thing. Jim be hating on the app. You provide a good platform for our people to get together and unite and be on one one accord with some of the things that need to be done in our community. Thanks, folks. I thank you. I appreciate that. And to God be the glory, because that that comment right there is exactly what I, what it was that I set out to do and what I wanted to accomplish. You know, because it's 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 it's, 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 it's necessary. It's necessary, just like the show we're going to do, pertaining to autism and all that there. It's important to get this information out there. And, um, you know, throughout the week, I have been looking. I was phony, so my teachers will not not fail me. (laughs) Girl, you crazy. (laughs) Jennifer is my barber doing so funny. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> just those no random apps. I'm telling you, what, what, what the Bible says is a ram in the bush. 
Don't deny yourself your blessings because <laughs> you ain't looking in the right places. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Jay. But thanks for that comment, Michelle, because like I said, that's exactly what I set out to do with creating the show is actually, you know, giving, like I said, just giving that voice to the people, man. So I'm glad to see that is actually going on. I'm going to convince Jennifer to try these days. Yeah, Roseanne, we're going to double table. <laughs> We're going to double tell you, Jay. And, and I, to be honest with you, Jay, I'll I, I be on them, but I'm not into them like that. I'll be on them, but I, I just find them humorous. You know what I mean? You you, you, you meet some you meet some good people sometimes. You meet some weird people sometimes. <laughs> but more than anything, you have some good conversations sometimes. You know, I've I developed a few friendships from that. No love interests or nothing of that nature, but you know, so, so friendship. <laughs> the farmer. I was hey, and just just for the record, I was being funny with the, what I said. I'm on farm. <laughs> farmersonly.com. <laughs> I was just being funny. <laughs> that Rochelle should have learned a lesson. Uh oh. Sound like Rochelle got a, a, a app story. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I've had some interesting conversations that, that I had. I take it that's just side between you two. I, who, 